There's a lot of talk about the FEMA camps of the United States. And there's also a lot of maps that people have done in-depth research into finding exactly where they are located, which is absolutely excellent. But let me say this first. I could not have done this research if it were not for our unlimited members. I could not take the time, I couldn't afford to take the time to do the research to connect two maps that expose the entire agenda of sustainable development and the FEMA regions. I couldn't have done it. Because, it, it, I mean, it took time to find all of this and put it all together. Now, previously, we've exposed what is called connectography. Now, to most people, they probably have never even heard that word before. That's because it's not actually a legitimate English word. It was made up by a guy named Parag Khanna. Now, Parag Khanna, who in the world's that? We're going to get there. Don't worry. But first, let's recap. This was posted quite a while on our website. I wrote this. I did a lot of research when I did this post as well, and it absolutely went viral both on YouTube and on Facebook. Excuse me, not on Facebook, on our website. Say goodbye to the 50 states. Get ready for the FEMA regions for the North American Union. The infamous agenda for the North American Union is taking shape, and the plan to do away with the 50 states and create FEMA regions is happening right now. And I can, stay, I can sit here and, and say, just a few months later, so much has transpired, but we are all being distracted. You know, I hate to say, I hate to use Putin's words with this, but Putin said to the American people, you're being distracted. It's because we are. We're watching this back and forth with the uh, selections going on here, while you have the United Nations taking the entire world by storm and quote-unquote policy and connectography and sustainable development and the Paris Agreement. Economically, according to Parag Khanna, a contributor to the New York Times, and that's not all he is, we'll get to him in just a minute, America would thrive more if the government did away with the states and created regions. At first glance, the plan seems to be a good idea. But rather, we must observe the hidden motive. The states of America exist to protect the rights of the individual, rather than that of the collective. However, given the agenda currently underway, the rights of the individual are being forsaken, and the feelings of the collective throttled upon the masses. Now this is the map here. This is the new seven-state agenda for the North American Union. Now, of course, this is what he's calling the, the, the new connectography map of the United States. We should be divided into regions rather than states. According to Parag and those uh, sourced in the report, the 50 states are dysfunctional and very messy, especially economically. With America continually on the downturn of leading the world in innovation, it becomes increasingly more evident that the USA is failing. Advanced economies in Western Europe and Asia are re uh, excuse me, reorienting themselves around most robust urban clusters of advanced industry, says Parag. However, is that the real motive behind it all? The plan for a new world order is very clear. A centralized, worldly government where there are no borders and only a ruling class of elites who run the world. Placing that as another boundary line for the end times. Using the discontinuation of the 50 states paints a clear picture that America is preparing itself for the new world order. Now, of course, this is the previous post, and this was written months ago. You can also find this post in our New World Order archives, where we've written a lot of stuff as of late. There's been a ton of stuff going on with the UN, of course, around the world as well, and sustainable development if you guys have been paying attention. Now, let's get into this, because we've got another map to go through. Let's talk high-speed rail in the United States. Plans for high-speed rail in the U.S. date back to the High-Speed Ground Transportation Act of 1965. Various state and federal proposals have followed. Despite being one of the world's first countries to get high-speed rail, uh, the Metro Liner service in 1969, uh, it failed to spread. Definitions of what, it con what constitutes high-speed rail vary, including a range of speeds over 110 miles per hour, and dedicated rail lines, inner city rail in the U.S. with top speeds of 90 miles per hour or more but below 125. It's sometimes referred to as higher speed rail. 
the Excella, Acella Express reaching 150 miles per hour and the Northeast Regional reaching 125 miles per hour are currently the only services in the country. Now, of course, according to Wikipedia, it's going to take years, years for this to take place. I'm going to expose that because it's not going to take that long at all. There are plans for higher speed rail and high, and high speed rail in California, the Midwest, New England, Florida, Texas, Pennsylvania, the Pacific Northwest, Colorado, New Mexico, and the Southwestern United States. As of 2016, the California High Speed Rail Authority is working on the California High Speed Rail Project, which is planned to link San Francisco, San Jose, Sacramento, Fresno, Los Angeles, uh, Bakersfield, and, uh, and other major cities in the state with speeds of up to 220 miles per hour. Construction is underway on sections traversing the Central Valley. Phase 1 will be completed in 2029, and Phase 2 will likely be completed before 2040. The Texas Central Railway is a line being built from Houston to Dallas with speeds of up to 205 miles per hour that should be completed in 2021. There are also higher speed rail projects in various parts of the country. Okay, doesn't sound like much. If you look at their map, it actually, do, I mean, it all goes to Chicago, but at the same time, it doesn't even look really like a FEMA regions map at all, does it? I mean, it doesn't look like it's connecting really any big cities. I mean, I guess you could say it is, but it's it's not really, what's the right word? Evident. Let's, let's use evident here. Now, we're going to take another sidestep here, and I need to connect this to the United Nations because there's a reason they're doing all of this. So this was posted today on the UN News Center interview. To be sustainable, cities should be more connected, inclusive, and dynamic, ICAO chief. A memorandum of understanding to enhance cooperation between urban development and aviation was signed in Ecuador during the United Nations Conference on Housing and Sustainable Urban Development. Now, there's another connection for you. The agreement was signed by Dr. Fang Lu, the Secretary General of the International Civil Aviation Organization, and Dr. Uh, Juan Klos, the Executive Director of the United Nations Human Settlements Program. Uh, according to a statement from ICAO, the agreement is significant because sustainable civil aviation is in a position to make critical contributions to states' achievement of the UN Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development. Okay, so that should say it all right there. Yes, they're talking about aviation. No, they're not talking about high-speed rail. They don't need to because they're already working on trying to make every city more connected. That's the only word I needed to connect this entire thing. To be sustainable, cities should be more connected. How can they do that better in the U.S.? If they were going to connect things in the U.S., they would use things like high-speed rail or civil aviation. All right, now back on track. Who in the world is Parag Khanna? Parag Khanna is a leading global strategist, world traveler, and best-selling author. He's a senior researcher fellow in the Center on Asia and Globalization at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy at the National University of Singapore. He is also the managing partner of Hybrid Re uh, Realty, a boutique geostrategic advisory firm, sorry I got lost, and co-founder and CEO of Facto Factotum, a leading content, content branding agency. Bragg's latest book is Technocracy in America, Rise of the Info State, 2017. He is author of a trilogy of books on the future of world order. World order? Mm-hmm beginning with the Second World, Empires and Influence in the uh, New Global Order, 2008, followed by How to Run the World, Chartering a Course of the, uh, to the Next Renaissance, 2011, and concluding with Connectography. Now you finally heard the word, Connectography. This is the guy who wrote the book, Mapping the Future of Global Civilization, 2016. Now let me stop there for a sec. You're probably thinking, who cares? This dude's an author. He's a strategist, whatever. Who cares, right? Okay, that's all right. Hang on. He is also co-author of Hybrid Reality, uh, Realty, excuse me, Thriving in the Emerging Human Technology Civilization, 2012. In 2008, Prague was named one of Esquire's 75 most influential people of the 21st century and featured in Wired Magazine's Smart List. Now here's where it gets really interesting. Prague has been an advisor to the U.S. National Intelligence Council's Global Trends 2030 program. Huh. Sustainable development. 
the global goals 2030 okay now we've got a really solid connection between the UN sustainable cities connections so on and so forth um, let me find my place again and served in the foreign policy advisory group to none other than Barack Obama for a president campaign now there was a reason I showed you a little infographic before because a lot of people who don't want to hear all the connections they just wanted to see the quick information that's why I put that there first I'm showing you how I got there I found this guy back in June I believe it was June yeah it was June and that's when of course I wrote that post because he wrote for the New York Times he's an author for CNN he's apparently very influential I don't find him very influential at all I think he's an idiot and apparently I'm not the only one so uh, not the only one who thinks he's an idiot so does RT uh, that said let's move let's move on where in the world did I get that map and how in the world did I make the connection between high-speed rail trains and FEMA regions okay this right here let me go to this one first this right here is his map on Harvard this is worldmap.harvard.edu slash map slash connectography this right here looks like a bunch of squiggly lines looks like a kid had way too much fun on, on, a, on, a, on a piece of paper right okay well all these little lines they all mean something as you can see what they all mean over here so we're gonna focus on the US yes this is very interesting over here because they've already got a ton of high-speed rails and proposed high-speed rails and so on and so forth we're gonna focus on the US because I found that the US map is beyond beyond it bears a resemblance to to the FEMA regions map I can see it without having to see another map to, to put it on there and that's what I put it on there just to double check it and that's why there was a picture of it so first of all let's remove some of this extra stuff here and I'm gonna show you You can see all over here what I'm gonna remove on the left side of the screen the telecom internet communications phone so on and so forth that's the purple lines those are gone oil lines existing gone oil lines proposed gone there's not many proposed in the US gas existing gone this is how many gas lines are already in the US gone okay gas lines proposed gone now we're down to electric proposed gone we've got major rivers you can see the big uh, blue lines or the purple blue lines see not purple blue the deep blue or the deep purple lines there they are major rivers they're gone okay canals existing canals proposed high-speed rail existing gone we're gonna leave that one on though we need that one so there's that there right these are the high-speed rail proposed lines in the US see the difference so these lines are for the high-speed railways of the US according to Parag Khanna now of course this bears a similar not a, not a direct correlation or resemblance to what Wikipedia has here let me open up their picture here uh, as you can see they're pretty similar they're pretty similar I do not know if this is laid in stone but I do know that it's been proposed and this guy has sat on presidential campaigns and he's also according to what was the magazine I can't exactly remember uh, Esquire's 75 most influential people of the 21st century so I imagine that he's going to influence somehow the high-speed rail lines of the US okay all right now let's confirm something first you've seen this map but you haven't seen the already existing uh, rail lines in the US let me show you those real quick here let me find it real quick major rail lines in the US that are already existing that's a lot right okay now if we go to high-speed rail proposed technically they're already there so this is a pretty standard FEMA regions map I know it's kinda of blurry I didn't download a very good quality map of it because I think we've all seen this about a thousand times and if you don't know what the FEMA regions are please do your research on the FEMA regions now that said let's move on now I bring you to another version of the same exact FEMA regions map except this one happens to have the pins at exactly where the mega cities or major cities listed on the FEMA region uh, FEMA regions map are which is vital to understanding the connections between all of these maps so have a look at this one again 
Understand that this is the same FEMA region map. It's just colored differently. Now, if we combine the Harvard Connectography Prague Kana's map with the FEMA region's map, a very striking resemblance becomes extremely evident. Number one, look at the pins and how the pins are automatically lining up almost exactly and almost on every single one with this map. Now, I'm going to tell you right away, look, when I layered this, it was extremely hard to find a FEMA regions map that actually fit this curve here and some of these curves here because most FEMA regions maps have them going in like this. They bend in. I don't know if you can see my mouse very well, but they bend in. So I had to find one that was a lot flatter, that it displayed the exact same FEMA region stuff and information um, that, that was already there. But that said, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, when they build these high-speed railways, they will connect the mega cities, or in other words, where the FEMA region centers are. If we were to layer again his connectography ec economic map, where they're going to do away with the 50 states, it would also line up, as I, proved, uh, as I proved previously as well. So why in the world is a global strategist lining up his... So his proposed, or I shouldn't say his because it's not his. Let, let me explain it better. This guy is the face of the strategists who are part of the new world order. And they're trying to wrap it in a nice little package and sell it to us like it's going to help. Like it's going to do something good for us. When we know for a fact, if we lose our borders, we no longer have a country. We lose our state borders, we no longer have rights. We are no longer individuals. Guess what we are? A collective. And when we become a collective, the rights of the individual no longer exist. Which is why state lines, state borders, they have to stay in place. We have to have state governance. We cannot just do away with the states. The 50 states of the United States of America would be no more. It would be just North America and the regions of North America. How are they going to pull this off? They're going to claim that they need to do this for our economy. They're going to claim that it's going to benefit America. When we know for a fact, as you can see right now, for those of you who are watching this video, it is the most deceptive turn ever. They're lining us up for FEMA camps. They are lining us up to accept the New World Order and the North American Union. I refuse to accept. Now as you can see here, let me, let me, let me zoom in on some of these spots. As you can see, I can't zoom. There we are. As you can see, that is, that is directly on the line. I mean all of them. This one's not even in the US anymore. This is in Canada. But still on a the line there. This is the one that's not connected. I was under I was unsure if that was still on the uh, the another FEMA regions map. It is. I could, as I said, I could have this not exactly lined correctly, but this one lines up, and then of course this one lines up. And DC is split as to where there would be a connection here somewhere. That one lines up. This one is the only one that doesn't. Now scrolling through, here here it all is lining up with all of the points on a FEMA map. Why in the world are they basing the future of America on a FEMA region's map? I would call that hook, line, and sinker. Or game, set, and match. Exposed. Why is connectography so important? Why is sustainable development so important? They have been pushing this agenda for years. You go back to the days of William Cooper. In the 90s and early 2000s, he was exposing climate change and, the, uh, and uh, global warming. You go back to the 40s and 50s, they were still pushing the same crap over and over. You go back to the days of George Washington, the first president of the United States. They were pushing the Illuminati agendas. The same stuff has been going on since the beginning of the U.S. of A. It's been going on before that too. They are all getting it pushed through now. 
How, we might ask? Because we are so distracted. In the words of Vladimir Putin, Americans are distracted by the elections. From what's going on around the world, we're distracted by our phones, our computers, sin, all of it. It's a distraction from what's actually going on and what's actually taking place. Our country is being taken from us. Now, I wanted to further cover what I meant earlier um, by how, how in the world they were going to do this in a short amount of time. Because, as Wikipedia says, it's going to take till 2040 or 2050 just for them to do the California stuff. You know, that's, that's pretty interesting because that's a lie. A lot of what they're doing is being modeled after communist China. We exposed the new global human order, that, the agenda that was just also adopted by the United Nations, which is a communist agenda. It was written by a freaking communist. And everybody thinks, oh, how wonderful. A new global human order. Wow. Great. It's communism. Now, how in the world are they going to push this through excuse me, not push this through. How in the world are they going to get this done by 2030? Because that's their projected goal date, 2030, the year 2030. 2017 is going to be a huge year for their agenda. Let's put it that way. This is China, a fast train to development. In less than 15 years, we're in 2016, their goal is by 2030, the Chinese have built the longest high-speed rail network on Earth of approximately... 9,676 kilometers, of which 3,515 kilometers can top speeds of 300 kilometers uh, km. The BBC reported that by 2012, China would have more high-speed rail networks than the rest of the globe put together. And to top it all, China has been converting its decades-old railway lines to accommodate high-speed trains. Something which India could easily emulate. In return, the high-speed rail network has triggered a fresh bout of growth into China's flagging economy, absorbing huge investments, generating a constant demand for resources and raw materials, providing hundreds of thousands of jobs and kindling economic activities by bringing goods, services, and people into greater proximity. Now that said, if they were to actually... Get this pushed through. Let me remove something real quick here. Uh, there. These are the proposed lines. There's a lot of jobs that are needed within the U.S. How many people would unknowingly and want to go build these lines? Actually, excuse me, it's not build them. It's rather convert them, which is a huge difference in time to construct it. Because if they had to build these lines, I wouldn't say it was going to be done for another, what, 50 years. But because, guess what? It's just a conversion. This is why I showed you this earlier. Hang on, let me zoom in again. Have a look at just these lines right here. We'll go from California right here, this line. It's already there. They just have to convert it. All of them are already there except for one. And I think that was one going up to Alaska. I think it's this one right here. Yeah. So it goes here and they would have to actually build from here up. But that said, if we go through the, the, the biggest part of it all, they're already there. They just need to be converted. That cuts time in, uh, in drastically in half. If not, it cuts it even more in half. It cuts it even more. Let's put it that way. So that said, you have a map that lines up directly with where the FEMA regions are. And you have a, another map that lines up with where high-speed rail would be. Why in the world is that important? I hope you guys are still with me. I know it's been a long report. Why in the world would that be so important? It's rather simple. We've seen the coffins. We've seen the FEMA camps. We've seen them all. You can deny them all you want, but we know exactly what you're building. A version of the Holocaust train. Holocaust trains were railway transports run by the Deutsche, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, National Railway System, under the strict supervision of the German Nazis and their allies for the purpose of forcible deportation of the Jews, as well as other victims of the Holocaust, to the German Nazi concentration, forced labor, and extermination camps. 
Modern historians suggest that without the mass transportation of the railways, the scale of the final solution would not have been possible. The extermination of people targeted in the final solution was dependent on two factors. The capacity of the death camps to gas the victims and process their bodies quickly enough, as well as the capacity of the railways to transport the condemned prisoners from the ghettos in Nazi-occupied Europe and Jewish ghettos in German-occupied Poland to selected extermination sites. The most modern, accurate numbers on the scale of the final solution will uh, still re uh, rely partly on shipping records of the German railways. There is a direct correlation, there is a direct resemblance, excuse me, not correlation, there is a, a direct resemblance of what's going on in Nazi Germany, or excuse me, what was going on in Nazi Germany and what's going on in the U.S. today. Our government is corrupt. Our government is coming for our guns, our rights, our freedoms. And they're building the trains that directly line up with the FEMA regions. FEMA's been building the camps to break the country into FEMA regions. It doesn't get much plainer than that. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of people who say, ooh, they still don't understand, so I encourage you to rewatch it. I encourage you, uh, I'm going to leave all this in the report we've got with this video, uh, the worldmap.harvard.edu slash map slash connectography to continue to check it out and see what other things you can find because there's a lot on here. Um, as I said again, they're trying to convert, not build, but convert the proposed high-speed rail lines. That cuts time in half. That's an important word is, is convert rather than build. Now that said, things in this country are about to change. We have the selections coming up. Are you distracted or are you actually paying attention to what's going on and what the UN, what the New World Order, and what they're doing? It's important. It's time to wake up. Coming very soon, we are very excited about this. Emma and I are very excited about this. Freedom Fighter Times is very excited about this. Coming very soon is another series. Actually, two series, excuse me. You're not going to want to miss what we have and what we're going to cover within this next sections of the Unlimited, or the Unlimited sections on our website. So if you're not a member of Freedom Fighter Times, please join today and support the movement and get access to 60 plus hours of investigative film. More to come. God bless and carry on.